Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Hamid Khan. I am the Business Relationships Executive for the ACCA Middle East. Uh, today, we will have a presentation on the importance of the practical experience requirement, which is known as PER. We're going to explain it to you today, how it works and what you need to know. So in today's presentation, we're going to cover what are the benefits of being a member of ACCA. We'll talk about the PER uh, policy overview. We're going to show you for the first time how to record your PER online uh, um, live on your MyACC account. We'll talk about the practical experience supervisor, what is the role and how you're going to choose the practical experience supervisor. Again, we're going to show, show you the live demo, what will be the benefit of being working with an ACC approved employers and last but not the least, plan your PER resources and what will be the next step. Please note down at the end of the presentation, we'll be having a question and answer session. I will really appreciate, please ask as many questions as you want. We'll be happy to answer all your questions. And when you leave today's presentation, you will be clear how to apply for the membership or how you can complete your PER. So let's start our presentation, membership benefits. Why someone needs to be a member of ACCA? There are so many benefits of being an ACCA. Uh, once you register, you register as a student. When you finish the qualification, you became an affiliate of ACCA. And once you finish the requirement, once you finish all three, all your experience part, then you became a member of ACCA. So we'll talk about in detail what are the benefits for the membership. Uh, so ACCA is a leading a global body. We have 227,000 members 544,000 students in 179 countries. So once you qualify as an ACCA member, you will be recognized as a chartered accountant in that many countries. We have 101 offices around the globe, which is providing all the services to their, to their, to their members, students, and affiliates. We have 7,400 approved employers. These are those employers who recruit ACCA and they give them a job opportunity. So you, it's not necessary. You can work only with approved employers and any organization can be approved employer of ACCA. The most important part is the strategic partnerships. I'm not going to mention all 80 here. I'm going to mention it to you only three or four today, which is going to be beneficial for the for, for you as an affiliate and once you became a member of ACCA. So first is the UAECA. If you are based in UAE and you became a member of ACCA, you can apply for the UAECA and you'll become a United Arab Emirates Chartered Accountant. There is no exams. Uh, you just need to be a member of ACCA and you must have a UAE residence visa, then you can apply for the UAECA. The next one, if you are planning to go to Canada, we have a, a MOU with the Canadian CPA. So you have to be a member of ACCA and you can apply for the, U, uh, for the Canadian CPA. So you just need to pass two online assessments. One is law and one is tax, and then you will be CPA from Canada. The other one is CAANZ. Once you became a member of ACCA and you are based in Australia or New Zealand, you can apply for the CAA and the Chartered Accountant Australia and New Zealand. There are so many other benefits. There are so many other qualifications you can add with your ACCA qualification, but you have to be a member of ACCA. So we have um, um, a kind of um, MOU with the, with, the, with the IIA. So you have to be a member. And if you like to uh, get a membership of IAA, then you have to do one exam only, which is coming after every three years. So they ask KCCM members to pass one exam and they became a member of IIA, Internal Audit, International Internal Audit. So these are some of the benefits once you became a member of ACCA. In the UAE itself, we have around 3000 plus members and in the entire Middle East, we have more than 5,000 members. And Alhamdulillah, we don't have any jobless member in the Middle East. Why? Because the employers recognize ACCA qualification as a membership qualification. 
So if you are as a student or affiliate, again, again, you might have 10 years of work experience, but you cannot be call yourself a member and employers recognize that even if you have 10 years of experience or five years of experience and you're not yet being a member of ACCA, you still an affiliate. That is the definition of, of ACCA for affiliates. The reason why 86% of employers think ACCA members are complete finance professional, they pass all the 13 exams. So knowledge is there. They have finished the ethics module. They are ethically equipped and they have a work experience. Again, again, we this is what we explain to the to the to the employer when we go to the employer and we talk to them we tell them okay what is the difference between students affiliates and members so that's why they are recruiting more acca members so if you gained an experience you have a lot of experience don't wait don't wait just apply for the membership and i'm sure you know that after four years of your membership you will become a long-term affiliates long-term affiliate means you'll pay the same fees as a member but you cannot call yourself a member so we provide different different opportunity to the members we provide them a networking opportunity we do a lot of events for the members which is enhance their knowledge and Unfortunately, we cannot invite the long-term affiliate. We cannot uh, invite the affiliate for that. So it's a completely different kind of events we do for affiliates and students, but you cannot come to the ACCA events once you became a member of ACCA. Another milestone, once you finish your five years of membership, then you became a fellow member of ACCA. So which means you are a senior member and there's a completely different roles available for the fellow member of ACCA. So just suppose we have uh, we have some affiliates who've been an affiliate in 2012, 2013, 2010, and they are not yet been a member of ACCA. By now they became a fellow member because they already have an experience. The only missing part is they have not yet submitted their practical experience to ACCA. And I'm sure they already have an experience because in the, if you're staying in the UAE or in the Middle East, you cannot stay here without a work permit without a visa. So they are working, but they are just being lazy not to apply for the membership. So I would really recommend you, really suggest you to please apply for your membership ASAP, okay? Uh, PR policy overview. So we'll talk about um, ACCA membership, exams, ethics, and experience. After completing these three E's, you became a member of ACCA and not students and affiliates they cannot use this four letters after the name they are not a member of acca and these four letters are only only for members of acca so once you became a member then you can use these four letters after your name practical experience requirement which is known as per there are two main elements for the practical experience requirement. One, you have to be in a relevant role for 36 months. These 36 months from one organization or could be from 10 different organizations. From one country could be from 10 different countries. From one sector could be from 10 different sectors. As far as your experience is relevant, then you that experience will be counted towards your practical experience requirement. The second part, the second element of the practical experience requirement is the performance objectives. So there are total 22 performance objectives available and you need to complete only nine out of 22. So we'll talk about that in detail, 36 months in the relevant role. What does it the relevant means? So most of your time is spending on accounting, audit, financial reporting, insolvency, management, taxation, or forensic, or anything which is related to that. It could be from any organization, any sector. Just for example, you're working for a big accounting company and you are sitting on a reception, that experience will be not counted towards your practical experience requirement. If you're working for school, your school, you're working for the hospital, you're working for your university, that if you're doing the relevant job, you do the account job over there, that experience will be counted towards your practical experience requirement. When we talk about ACCA, 
even from the registration, the eligibility criteria, you're going to see the flexibility in ACCA qualification. So you're going to see this flexibility in each and every part of ACCA, even in the practical experience. Like for example, if you're working part-time, that experience will be counted. You're working in an organization, you do multiple roles, that experience will be counted. You do internship, just, just internship, no salary, nothing, and you're working a relevant job, that experience will be counted. Volunteer job, you do some volunteer job for the hospital, you do some volunteer job for, for masjid, for church, you do volunteer job for, for any other organization. And so far as that experience is relevant, that experience will be counted towards your practical experience requirement. Even if you do the partial relevant roles, just suppose you're working in an organization, only 20% of your role is relevant to accounts, audit, or finance. You can claim for that 20% of your role. We're going to talk about that in detail in the next slide. Roles before joining ACCA, even before becoming a student of ACCA, if you gain some experience, that will be counted towards your practical experience as well. Along with the studies or after completing your study, you gain some experience that will also count it towards your practical experience requirement. As far as this experience supervised by a qualified accountant, okay, which is known as the mentor. So let's go to the to the to the live demo. Let me just log in to the to the um, to the account, and I will show you uh, how you're going to record your experience. So this is your My ACC account. When you log into your My ACC account, this is how it looks like. This is exactly the same your My ACC account. Before you go to anything else, I would really appreciate, suggest you, recommend you, request you, please update your details on your My ACC account. This is going to give us an opportunity to communicate with you better. So contact details, employment details. Um, the most important one is the communication preferences. So when you click on that, we're going to ask you, how do you want us to communicate with you? So you would like us to communicate with you post, send it to something via hard copy or email. Account correspondence by email, post or by email, important information by SMS. Just select one of these one. And the most important one is ACCA events and survey. Do you want to receive this type of information from ACCA or not include in list of past finalists yes or no offers from the third parties that is the more again very important so it could be from any offer the organization is offering to the acc affiliates for acc students so you have to select yes or no there there might be an event uh, which we are working with the third party if you said no you will not get any invitation for that event because if it's not an ACCA event, this is going to be the third party event. And most important, sometimes we receive the job opportunity from the different organization and they want us to share that with, the, with, your, with your students, affiliates or members. If you selected no, we will, sorry, will not be able to share that information with you. So please update your information on your My ACCA account and give us that um, preferences, give us information. How do you want us to communicate with you? So that is the most important one. So let's go back to the dashboard. So once you became an affiliate, it will show in your account you're an affiliate. You can see your progress. Uh, you can see that all the outstanding balance we have, you can see here. You can download the certificate. You can view your certificate. You can look for your transcripts. You can download all these things from your MySys account, unless if you have zero balance. If you have any outstanding balance, you'll be not able to download these certificates or these transcripts from your my ACC account. So let's go to the record the practical experience requirement. Let's see how it works. So as the first step, you have to record, you have to um, create an employer account. Okay. So first of all, you have to go to the employment and you have to add new employer. 
and we have to give the employee name, I would say A, B, C, and Z. And address, I would say Dubai, KV, town city Dubai, location, I would say UAE, and save and finish. Now, employer is here, okay? So you would like to edit this employer, you can delete this employer, or you can add your role, okay? So you can add your role, or you can just click on that, and it will show you the same page. So add your role. What is your role in that organization? So job title, I would say, finance manager, start date. So I would say I started that, um, 2008 or 2017, I would say. Okay, if its job has already been finished, you have to put the end date. If it's not yet been finished, you can leave it blank, which means you are still working in that organization. So I would say end. Uh, okay. So as per the ACCA, if you're working 35 hours per week, that will be counted a full-time job. If you do less than that, that will be counted as a part-time job, which means your job is part-time, so it will be counted in hours. So I would say I'm working in this organization 20 hours per week. Now, relevant role. If your job is 100% relevant to accounts, audit or finance or taxation or any technical, any other technical areas, you can say 100%. But I would say I'm working with this organization, only 50% of my job is relevant to accounts, audit or, 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 or any, any relevant areas. I'm working with a prudent employer, no. Is this role, audit role, no. Is this a lecturing role, no. If you are teaching ACCA or any other accounting, uh, qualification so one year experience will be counted regardless if you are teaching for 20 years only one year of experience will be counted okay so i put here 20 percent of average hours per week and 50 percent of my role is relevant so let's see what is coming so you see only six months is counting out of this two years. I submitted 2018 and finished it on 8th of uh, October, but it is showing only six months. So if you're working for an organization and you think you are, you are, you are only 20%, only 30% of your job is relevant, all the calculation will be done automatically. So you just need to put the information that you've been working 20 hours, 30 hours. If you're working for more than 35 hours, hours there will be no extra benefit because that is the benchmark, okay? So this is how you're going to record your employer. So once you record your employer, then you can delete it or you can add more employers or you can add all, all, all this information over there. So you click on that, edit this role, delete this role, add selected uh, supervisor because we already have some supervisors here because this, we have a lot of experience there or you can add a new supervisor. So let's go back to the presentation. Let's see what we have next. Performance objectives. That is the most important part of the PER, practical experience requirement. It's very easy, very simple, and you can finish that AS like, like very, very quickly. It's very easy, but I believe the lack of the knowledge um the people are stuck with that so i'm going to show you how to complete your performance objectives so there are total 22 performance objectives available and out of 22 you need to complete only nine the first five are essentials so these five we call them a soft skills soft skills means you can achieve these five on like any role any role if you are on a very very junior role in your organization uh, related, uh, related to accounts, audit, or finance, then you still can achieve those performance objectives, these five ones. The 
pro professionalism and ethics, stakeholder relationship management, strategy, innovation, governance, risk and control, leadership and management. You can achieve these five in, in any position, anywhere, any organization. The most important one are the technical one. So out of 17, you need to complete only four. You can complete three from the corporate reporting and one from the financial management. You can complete two from the financial management and two from the audit and insurance. So you don't need to go for all four from one sector. It could be from one from corporate reporting, one from taxation, one from the audit insurance, and one is from data, digital, and technology. So you are the one, you are the one who are deciding which, which performance objectives you are achieving. These are the technical ones. So out of 17, you just need to complete four. So five plus four, there are total nine performance objectives you need to complete. There are three parts for the, for, the, for the performance objective. The first is description. Description is a summary of the objective. There are five elements for each objective. So these elements are just like the task and the behaviors which you demonstrate to achieve the performance objective. And last but not the least, two to 300 word statement. So in a statement, you are not supposed to write stories, okay? You just need to write about one or two elements, okay? Or you have to write all about the elements, like five elements, how you, you think these elements has been, uh, been, been, been help you. And you just need to write the description of the element. Just a summary, two to 300 words, the maximum you can write it for 500 words. Here is some of the, some of the tips from our side. For each objective, provide an example task. Describe the skills you gain, reflect on what you learned. Our tips will be use at least one example for each objective. Avoid repeating information and tell us what you did. So we'll go back to the to your to the MySCC account and see how the performance objective is going to be working. So performance objectives. So this person, which is the, the person who has created an account, so he has completed five performance objectives. These five are already completed. He's been signed off by the mentor, he's been signed off by the supervisor. So these are the one under review, under review, under review, these are not yet being signed off. Okay, this has already been forwarded to the mentor, but has not yet been started, like being uh, signed it off. So let's just start, uh, start with the with the financial management one. So let's see. So this is the this is the objective: evaluate investment and financing decisions. Okay, this is the objective. This is the description, which is going to give you an idea what exactly this means. And these are the elements, these are the skills you have to achieve to complete this objective. So you have to click claim, 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 claim. It will go to your uh, a basket and then you have to record your answer. So two to 500 words, not more than 500 words, okay? So you can see that what they're going to ask you. So you can click on this question mark. It will give you full information how you're going to complete your performance objectives. Write a short statement, two to 500 words, in the box below telling us what you did to meet the objective and highlighting any lesson you learned. Your statement should be a concise explanation of how you achieve the performance objectives. Remember that you only need to cover the description of the performance objective. You don't need to summarize all the activities you carried out to achieve the individual element. So they're going to ask you, your statement should be in your own words be clear and concise please provide evidence and example to help illustrate your experience avoid rep repetition or references of other statements not provide any private or sensitive information be a true and accurate reflection of your work so when you when you write all these things the next thing is claim the objective when you claim the objective it will go to your you have to provide the mentor's detail and it will go to the mentor. So this is linked to the examination. You can see that which examination it has been linked, financial management, strategic business leader, 
and advanced financial management. So FM, SBL, and advanced AFM. Okay, so you can see all this information in your MyCC account. You don't need to go and ask anyone how to complete your PR. All this information is there in your MyCC account. You just need to go there and to search for those information. You see, this is the, this is the information. If you don't understand anything, you just click on this uh, question mark and then it will give you all the information. Do you want to submit an individual element to your supervisor? Claim. Click claim next to element. You want to send it to your supervisor and then go to your basket to submit it. When you click on that, it will automatically go to your basket and you can submit it that one. So let's go back to the presentation. Practical experience supervisor. This is the person who's going to verify your experience. It should be from the same organization and should be a qualified accountant, not a friend, not a family person can be your supervisor. So what is the role of the practical experience supervisor? Identify performance objectives to target, plan, plan experience, work, task, and areas for development, evaluate your progress and other feedback, and sign up your performance objectives. So you can sit with your mentor, and that person can tell you, okay, in your job, these, these objectives you have already achieved, if you are not aware. So then you can sit with that person and that person is going to help you plan experience, work tasks and areas of development. So what, who can be your practical experience supervisor must be a qualified accountant to sign up your performance objectives, not a CCA affiliate, not a student, not um, a, like, like uh, should be a member of that body, should be a member of IFAC non-qualified land manager can sign off your time. So just suppose your direct line manager is not a professional accountant, okay? Then you have to have two mentors. One is going to verify your work, like your, your, your performance objectives, and the second one, who's your line manager, that's going to verify your relevance of your job and hours you work for. Okay, so 35 hours per, per week, I mentioned, or like uh, relevance of your job. So these two things we're going to come from your line manager. If your direct line manager is not a professional accountant. So anyone from the organization, like you're working for XYZ organization, and your direct line manager is not a professional accountant, but your CFO, or your CEO, or, or finance manager is a professional accountant. So you will have two mentors, one, is your line manager who's going to verify that information to ACC that okay you've been in a relevant role for for three years for two years for one month two months is a hundred percent or how many hours you work as a uh, as a, in the organization so nominate second qualified supervisor to sign up your performance objectives let's see if we can have some information on the so supervisor So you can see that this person has already have a mentor. So when you click on the, you can resend the invite if he's not received the email. So before you assign anyone to be your mentor, you have to ask them their contact details. So what details do we need? We need name, last name, email address, what is the relationship? Relationship means this person is an IFAC um, um, qualified or non-IFAC qualified. If it's non-IFAC qualified, this person can sign up only your time and relevance of your job. The IFAC 
qualified land manager can sign off your performance objectives. If you think that you're uh, in fact qualified internal supervisor, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so you have find all this information over there and you can send an invite and this person will receive an email. This person received an email that XYZ has assigned you a mentor. Are you happy to be a mentor? If they say yes, then they can click on the link and they will receive, the, um, uh, they, will, they will create them an online account if the person is not an ACCM member. If it's an ACCM member, they don't need to create another account. They will receive everything for their My ACC account. But if the person is not a qualified accountant or not an ACCM member, then they will receive the user ID and password, which allow them to log into their My ACC account where they can view your answers. So they can sign up your performance objectives over there. So this is how the practical experience supervisor at remove you can provide all these details and then they can be your practical experience supervisor the person should be ifac qualified line manager or non ifac qualified line manager ifac qualified internal supervisor or ifac qualified external supervisor now if you are working with an acc approved employer uh which are approved like trainee development approved employer gold or platinum then your life will be very very easy so you just need to complete your work, work experience with them and then you have to you will be exempt from the performance objectives part so only one part you need to complete the 36 months of work experience the other part the performance objective one that will be exempt for you so you're not going to do anything the performance objectives so you just need to log into your MyCC account and you will download this approved employer form, which is called approved employer summary form. And you need to ask your employer to fill that form for you. So whenever you are ready for the membership, we need that form only. So you will have to submit that form along with your membership application and then you will be a member of ACC. We're not going to ask you anything about the performance objectives. So any employer can be becoming an ACC approved employer it's very easy very simple there's no charges they're completely free they have to submit a couple of documentation and we review the document and we award them approved employer status so if you're working with an approved employer and you are leaving the organization before completing your 36 months of experience you have to sign this form from them so just suppose on the form, they say that in this one year, two years or five months or six months, you have achieved only four objectives. So rest of the five, you have to target that in your new organization. If they say you have to achieve, you have already achieved all nine objectives while you're working with them for a year or two years, then the next employer you have to find or you have to work for completing your experience part. There are some support available for ACCA uh, affiliates. You can go, you can search, and you can see that uh, the, um, the information is available on the ACCA website about the PER. Performance objective guidelines also available on the website. You can go through that. You can see all this information, whatever we discussed today. You will find that information on the ACCA website. The next requirement is the ethics and professional skills module. This is the new ethics module which ACC has introduced in 2017. So the best thing is like now if uh, for the students and uh, affiliates, they have to pay 65 pounds to complete this one. If you became an affiliate before 2017, you can, you can complete this ethics module for free. Again, if you became an affiliate before 2017, you can complete the new ethics module for free. It has a lot of information that will going to help you to increase the employability. So you'll get a certificate, you'll get a transcript for that. And that is what we suggest you to complete that one if you have not completed. This is 15 hours long module and uh, you don't need to complete that in one go. You can finish that as per your own convenience but it's good to complete that that will if you have completed the other module the other ethics module a long back it's better to complete this one now that we're going to refresh your information so this ethics module will give you a lot of information um about 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 the ethics and what is going on in the market there's a, it's a, it's it's a only 15 uh, hour uh, module 
So what will be the next step? Let's recap what we said today. Find a practical experience supervisor. Target performance objectives. Gain experience. Update progress online. Get PER reviewed and sign off. Easy peasy. And you will. The next step is apply for the membership, and you'll be a member of ACCA. And then you can use these four beautiful letters after your name. Complete applying for the membership, complete your exam, complete your PR, complete your ethics module, and you are ready for membership. Any questions? So we reach out to the end of the session. Now we are asking for questions. Any questions, guys? Please ask as many as questions you want to. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Tanzok, you can hear me. Is there any questions? Hi, Hamid. Yes, I can hear you. So one of the questions is about the recording. Everyone is asking about the recording of the webinar. So the recording will be made available to you on email during the post-webinar comms and also on the ACCA Middle East Content Hub in the section for the affiliates. So and then we have a question that. Hassan, he's saying, hi, sir. I have quite a few questions. I would really appreciate Hamid can give me a five minutes quick call. So, yes, Hamid can give you a call. Can you please email yes. Hamid Khan at accaglobal.com? Yes, this is my email ID. You can just call drop me a message. You can email me uh, with your contact number. I'll be happy to help you. I'll be happy to give you a call. Uh, not today, definitely. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Uh, anytime, anytime, or any preference timing, just please mention that. I'll be happy to give you a call. Any other questions, guys? Any so, questions do we have to? to ask? Do we have to do the ethics module even if we finished after 2017? Uh, no, if you already completed uh, the ethics module, you don't need to complete that again. If you became uh, affiliate after 2017, which means you have completed the new one. So no need to complete that again. The one who became affiliate before 2017, it is available free for them. This is an offer from the ACCA. And one more offer, which I, which I forgot to mention, if you're going to apply for the membership now, there's a discount on the membership admission fee. So instead of paying 258 pounds, you'll pay only 129 pounds. And that fees you'll pay only once your application has been accepted, and then you'll have to pay 129 pounds. But you have to be on the Middle East database. If you are using your home address in your MySys account, you will not get this discount because this discount is only available for the affiliates in the Middle East. Okay, there's another question from Rosario. How can I update the job role in the same organization? Yes, so you have to put the end date. Okay, you started in 2018 as a, as a junior accountant and it's finished in 20, 2019. Okay, after that, you have to add another role and you can start from 2019 to today, uh, a new role. So you, being, you can add roles, you can add as many roles as you want. So you can update that information on your MySCC account, but you have to end the first role and then add another one. 
how can I reinstate as an affiliate? It's very easy, very simple. You can give a call on the ACCA uh, number. If you are based in UAE, there's a toll free number, 8300-3570-3172. If you are outside UAE, then you give a call on 0044-141-5822. Triple zero. You call them and you can make the payment over the phone. Your account will be uh, reinstated within 24 to 48 hours and you can complete your PR after that. This is from Sada. How can I, how can my employer get an approved employer status? Yes, it's very easy to become an SEC approved employer. Uh, they just need to submit two documentation. One is how they support ACCA students and affiliate in the organization. The second one is they have to give us the information. There should be uh, some senior person who is going to guide ACCA students or affiliate with the relevant job. So these two documents are required and they became necessary approved employer for the gold or uh, for the uh, gold and platinum, uh, which will benefit the, uh, the, the ACCA trainees as well. Drop us an email on this email address, hamid.khan at accglobal.com. I will share with you all the information. It's very easy, no charges, and it's like one or two weeks, you'll get the approved employee status. The next one is, is there a limit being an affiliate to apply for membership? No, but the best is, as soon as you finish your 36 months, apply for the membership. The reason why, because there are much, much more benefits uh, for members compared to the affiliates, to be very honest with you guys, because there are much more, more, more benefits for the members. Even if you go to the employer and they see that you are an affiliate, then they say, okay, you are not, you are not suitable for this job. So they have a completely different range of job for members. Hi, my employer has a professional development status. What does that mean? Professional development, once you became a member of ACCA, then every year you have to submit 40 units of CPDs. CPDs are continued professional development. So if you're working, if you once you became a member and you're still working with the same employer, then you'll be exempt to submit the CPDs because we believe what the documentation they have submitted. So we understand, we look into that documentation. So there is a learning and development option inside the organization. So we're not going to ask you to submit your CPDs to ACCA because you're working with an approved employer who are professional development approved. So there are two types of approved employer. One is for students and affiliate, which is called trainee development. And the one which is for the members that is called professional development. So for the students benefit is they will exempt from the PER and for the members, they will be exempt from the CPDs. What if the organization I work does not have any professional accountant or do I or do I know they are part of IPAC? Okay, that's a good question. If you're working for an organization and you're not able to find an, uh, an appropriate mentor in that organization, then there's always an option. External auditor of the same organization can sign up your performance objectives. So you always have an option to assign an external auditor of your organization to become your mentor. And you have to have land manager who's going to verify the information that relevance of your job and hours per week. How can my organization get the approved employer status? Yes, drop us an email, hamid.khan at accglobal.com. I will share with you all the information. Very easy, simple, couple of documentation and your organization will become an ACC approved employer. Yeah, so I think that's it for the questions. If you have any further questions, please email Hamid uh, on the, with the email on the screen, hamid.khan at accglobal.com. Please go and check our ACCA uh, Middle East Content Hub and you'll get all this information over there. We're going to post this video or this recording on that uh, portal and there will be a lot of other information, a lot of other resources available for the affiliates very soon on that portal. So please go and check the information on the ACCA Content Hub. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, please.
Tonzo, Gabi Jan. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.